The Human Health Exposure Analysis Resource here is a centralized network of exposure analysis services and expertise available to eligible researchers who want to add or expand exposure analysis to their studies of human health. In this video series, investigators describe their projects and experiences with the HERE program. Let's meet the investigators. Dr. Wendy Satiawan, professor at the University of Southern California, discusses her project, The Role of PFAS Exposures in Non-Alcoholic Fatty Liver Disease and Hepatocellular Carcinoma in the Multi-Ethnic Cohort. Dr. Chandy John, professor at Indiana University School of Medicine, discusses his HERE project, Micronutrient Deficiencies, Environmental Exposures, and severe malaria risk factors for adverse neurodevelopmental outcomes in Ugandan children. Dr. Andres Cardenas, assistant professor at Stanford University, discusses his project, Mitochondrial DNA Biomarkers of Prenatal Metal Mixture Exposures, Intergenerational Inheritance, and Infant Growth. Dr. Katherine Carr, professor at the University of Washington, discusses her project, dynamics of exposure phthalates and asthma in a randomized trial. How did you learn about the HERE program and what motivated you to apply? So I heard about the HERE program for, uh, from one of my colleagues and she sent me the link to the HERE website and that's where I learned about um, this all kind of wonderful services that the program has to offer. So since my research interest is in liver cancer and to identify factors, whether it's lifestyle or environmental or genetics that can be associated with disease risks and progression. So this kind of, you know, kind of intrigued me um, to look into uh, this particular environment exposure might be influencing disease risk. So after I learned about that here offers uh, PFAS measurements for studies that are currently funded by NIH, I decided to apply. I learned about here through a meeting with Bob Wright. Um, I was at Mount Sinai giving a talk. He met with me uh, to talk about various things um, to do with what he was doing at Mount Sinai um, and some of my research. The resources here had to do additional testing uh, relating to environmental factors and our research outcomes. We put together a uh, application based on our discussions. Uh, I learned from this resource, from the research community, actually, I believe it was a listserv uh, from NIHS, uh, one of these listserv probably from the Superfund program, um, became interested in working with HERE uh, because the ability to measure multiple exposures, and I was really interested in the mixtures approach to study multiple exposures, not just one at a time. How I learned about the HERE program goes back to, I think, 2017, when Dr. Gwen Coleman from the NIEHS um, paid a visit to the University of Washington. And during one of her presentations, she mentioned this opportunity. But at that point, um, I didn't have any resources or plans for ways to assess phthalate exposure in that uh, existing cohort study. So the CHEER at that time, now HERE, uh, resource provided a really unique and um, nice opportunity to um, leverage this existing study and build in uh, the component to examine phthalate exposure in our cohort. Tell us about your project and your experience with the HERE Lab Network and Data Center. So this, the parent study funded by NCI, um, so the goal is to identify factors associated, associated with disparities in liver cancer and chronic liver disease um, in ethnically diverse populations. So we focus on lifestyle, genetic, social, contextual factors in the study and we leverage data and samples that have been collected in the cohort. Now the HERE project is adding layer to this comprehensive um, study to better understand the role of environmental exposures, particularly PFAS um, in influencing liver disease risks. The consultation with the lab hubs was definitely useful. Um, this is where we determine whether the project is feasible, looking at the sample availability, the type of samples, and looking at also the timeline. And uh, this is also when we realized that we could 
actually add untargeted metabolomics um, measurements to the study, which definitely expanded the scientific aims of, of our study. The consultation with the data center was mainly to review what variables um, are available and how we plan to share them in the future. So I think I found it, you know, it's very straightforward and, and uh, helpful and it's, it's, it's really a streamlined process. So the project within which the HERE project was subsumed or included was a project looking at neurodevelopmental outcomes in children with severe malaria. In the new study, we were looking whether or not some of the worse outcomes we saw, both in terms of mortality and in terms of worse neurodevelopmental outcomes among survivors, were contributed to or made worse by um, specific environmental factors or by uh, the host response to those factors. It was a collaborative work to come up with um, what would be the best idea for this project because we don't know the environmental side of things and the HERE group is not as familiar with the severe malaria side of things. And so we had to work together, um, but it definitely was an interactive, iterative process that I think came up with the the best um, way to look at the question and the best use of the resources that uh, HERE has to offer for this particular study. The focus of my project was really to try to understand whether prenatal exposures, so exposures happening early during fetal development, affect uh, children's uh, development, uh, both growth and adiposity in general. So the consultations uh, with the HERE labs actually contributed immensely to my project. Initially, uh, we wanted to measure uh, a biomarker of an epigenetic modification in the mitochondria. After the initial cons consultation, we decided to go in a different route to complement the measurement of mitochondria with telomere length. Um, in terms of the exposures, initially, uh, we wanted to measure toxic metals. Uh, we didn't know it was a possibility to also measure essential metals, uh, which are um, metals that we need um, uh, as cofactors in, in our bodies. Uh, and this kind of expanded the, the scope of the project into looking not only at toxic elements, but also essential elements which are needed uh, for nor normal development. So the data center uh, also provided uh, good expertise in terms of the environmental measurements and providing some quality control and quality assurance on those measures. They provided a lot of support into making sure that the data was uh, well documented that we had pretty good descriptors for the data that we were able to archive that uh, long-term as well. We um, assessed exposure to phthalate chemicals in a group of farm worker children uh, in Washington state with a repeat measures design. The development of our project really um, was embellished by our conversations with um, the resources at the data center and the labs. and. You know, I would say that the, those um, exchanges were really helpful and responsive to questions that we had and helped us um, kind of shape our plans, encouraged us to think about beyond phthalates, what other chemical exposures might be useful for us to think about uh, as part of our service consultation. We ended up with a expanded list of exposures of interest that could be characterized, including pesticides and the um, organophosphate flame retardants. Would you recommend HERE to other investigators? I would definitely recommend HERE to others. Um, in fact, I a couple of my colleagues have already submitted applications and one of them already um, recently approved. So I highly recommend for those you know, studies who want to add another layer of exposure data to definitely consider HERE program. I thought the whole process from submitting the applications to getting final approval was pretty straightforward. I would recommend here to others, and it gives an opportunity to um, look at things that, if one isn't in the area of environmental health, may be quite important um, in a study that didn't focus on environmental health. So the expertise of the groups in here is extraordinary. And, and there's a real chance for kind of amplifying the breadth of the work that's done in a project like this, as well as the potential impact and future work. It's really an extraordinary opportunity um, to 
work with experts in the field of environmental health, um, even if one is not in that area one, oneself. 90% of what we needed for the analysis was done by the HERE statistics group, and they did an amazing job. Yeah, I would highly, I would highly recommend HERE to others. Uh, the main reason is that I applied to this uh, as an early stage investigator, and I think it's a great way to get some experience on uh, elaborating on your idea and your own hypothesis as well. I know the NIH system is very competitive to try to go for a bigger award. It also produced a lot of preliminary data that actually resulted in a grant for me. So it really benefited my career immensely. I would definitely recommend the use of the HERE resource to others. Um, it really, for us, provided a tremendous opportunity to extend the contributions from our parent study and uh, make the most of the investment that was already there. Um, certainly for my trainee who was involved, this provided um, a really optimal opportunity for analysis of samples for data to use in his dissertation and provided an excellent experience in terms of what is you know, involved in sample processing and data analysis for an environmental epidemiological study using um, biomarkers of exposure and um, biological pathways of toxicity. Want to hear more about these projects? Check out our interviews with individual investigators in this Spotlight series. Thank you for watching.